This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it, or I can use it for good. What I do today is very important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. Listen, I'm a kid and you know I be on the way. Yeah, and we coming for the bags. If they said I couldn't have, get the team. I got a vision for the things you wouldn't believe. And here's a lot of hard work that's over everything. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone. Forever. Leaving something in its place, I have traded for it. But we ain't letting up, we never done that. Ain't nowhere to hide. You ain't gotta see me come and keep me on your mind. I want it to be gain, not loss. Good, not evil. Success, not failure. In order that I shall not forget the price I paid for it. gentlemen welcome to the 2023 american heart association paul bear brain awards please welcome your host dusty dvorak college football analyst for espn and abc good evening good evening and welcome to houston texas for the 2023 american heart association paul bear bryant awards presented by Marathon Oil. I am Dusty Dvorak, and it's an absolute honor to be here tonight to celebrate the best of the best in college football coaching. While we honor the six finalists for Coach of the Year, tonight we'll also award the heart of a champion to Mark D'Antonio. You all know him as a legendary coach at Michigan State, but you'll learn more about why he is so revered by players, coaches, and the community. We will also bestow the Lifetime Achievement Award to Hall of Famer, National Champion, former Bear Bryant Award winner, my former coach, and a man that changed my life, Bob Stoops. For 37 years, the American Heart Association has joined with the Bryant family to raise awareness and important funding for the fight against heart disease and stroke. And all of you here tonight in Houston and those at home can play a part in this fight. You can text BEAR23 to 41444 to donate or access the QR code on your screen to give. And be sure to follow us across social media at Brian Awards for behind the scenes coverage of tonight's awesome event. While every year is important, this year's ceremony has a special relevance as it marks the 40th anniversary of Coach Bryant's passing. To his grandson, Mark, who is here with us tonight, and to the entire Bryant family, we are pleased to dedicate tonight to his memory and his legacy of excellence. To get things kicked off for us, I would like to welcome presenting sponsor, Marathon Oil's Chairman, President, and CEO, Lee Tillman. Well, thank you so much, Dusty. We really appreciate the, the kind introduction. Just want to say Marathon Oil could not be prouder to be the presenting sponsor of tonight's Bear Bryant's Awards. You know, as we honor Bear Bryant, as we recognize these tremendous coaches this evening, we're also raising funds for such an important cause in the American Heart Association. So it was so great to see people give generously. Very much appreciate that. But for almost a century, the American Heart Association has been leading the fight for longer, healthier lives. And they've been doing that through really leading the battle against heart disease and stroke. We've been the presenting sponsor now for 14 years and we've now committed, of course, to take that all the way through 2024, which happens to be the centennial anniversary of the American Heart Association. The powerful combination 
of the Bryant family, the Heart Association, these great coaches that so generously give of their time really is foundational to this partnership that we've developed with this event. How did Coach Bryant's example of leadership and excellence align with the mission at Marathon Oil? Not surprisingly, Marathon Oil is a results-driven company. We strive every day to deliver value to our shareholders and really strive for excellence in all aspects of our business. Similar to that, Coach Bryant was equally focused on results. He wanted to deliver championship caliber teams and really set the bar for his peers. However, both Marathon Oil and Coach Bryant recognize that it's not just about results. It's about how you deliver those results. For us, that means delivering those results safely with environmental stewardship and ensuring business integrity. For Coach Bryant, what that meant was not just winning football games, but ensuring that he had prepared his student athletes for winning at the game of life well, be, well beyond their playing years. Extremely well said. Thank you, Lee, and to all of your colleagues at Marathon Oil, a huge thanks from all of us here tonight. Thank you, Dusty. Absolutely. It. Thank Appreciate you, Lee. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right, let's hear it one more time for Lee Tillman and Marathon Oil for their continued support of the Bryan Awards and the American Heart Association. The important work of the American Heart Association can be seen every day across the country. We saw it firsthand earlier this month when the nation watched in shock as Buffalo Bill safety, DeMar Hamlin fell to the ground suffering from cardiac arrest. If it wasn't for the medical staff and the immediate care and CPR he received, DeMar might not have made it. All of our coaches here tonight are part of a very special group. Like Coach Bryant, these men lead student athletes not only to be prepared to compete on the field, but in the game of life. Last month, tragically, we lost a member of this fraternity to complications from a heart issue. Many of the coaches here tonight and those watching across the country had a special relationship with Coach Mike Leach. He revolutionized much of the way football is played today, and his impact on the game will last for years to come. Our thoughts, our prayers go out to the Leach family and all of those lucky enough to call him a friend. The 2022 season was exciting to say the least. The six gentlemen you're about to meet led their teams to new heights of success and provided drama and intrigue throughout the season. Let's meet our 2022 Coach of the Year finalists. Trust the process, go one and out a day, there's no secrets. Don't ever take one in for granted. You know got me? Beat them every day. They got to see us. They got to look us in the eye for four. Keep with it, keep grinding, keep doing it, because it is hard to do. Wow. <laughs> nothing better than college football and nothing better the great coaches. Congratulations to all you coaches. We'll hear from each of them in just a few minutes. But right now, it's time to give out our first piece of hardware. For the third consecutive year, the Bryan Awards is honoring a coach that took the nation by storm with fan favorite coach of the year. Fans from all over the country voted in record numbers this year for their favorite coach. And now we get to learn who came out on top. Please join me in welcoming to the stage from fan favorite sponsor, Accenture, Marty Rogers, Senior Managing Director, and Sandra Ruman, Managing Director. Are you ready? 
the 2023 fan favorite coach of the year is Coach Josh Heupel from the University of Tennessee. Congratulations. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Coach Heupel was unable to join us this evening. So on behalf of Accenture and our Accenture team, we accept this award on his behalf and we look forward to presenting this award to him in Knoxville. Please help me welcome to the stage Doug Lawson, American Heart Association, Houston Board President and CEO, St. Luke's Health and Senior Vice President of Operations, Texas Division with Common Spirit Health. Doug, we're about to meet a great coach and an even better man one that truly has the heart of a champion. In 2020, the Paul Bear Bryant Heart of a Champion Award was established to recognize an individual whose notable contributions and positive influence have helped to define the ways we enjoy, watch, and engage in sports. Winners of this award exemplify the same exceptional characteristics for which Coach Bryant was known. Integrity, leadership, perseverance, teamwork, humility, and of course, grit. Mark D'Antonio began his coaching career as a grad assistant at Ohio University in 1980. In the following years, his career led him to various coaching roles with schools throughout the Midwest. In the early 2000s, Coach D'Antonio landed at the helm of an Ohio State defense, which would go on to win the national championship in 2003. The next season, he got his first head coaching job at the University of Cincinnati. Three years later, Michigan State named Coach D'Antonio its 24th head coach, launching the greatest era in Spartan history. D'Antonio Spartans still hold the active record for consecutive bowl victories. But all of that success almost never happened. In September of 2010, just hours after one of the most famous plays in Michigan State history, a touchdown pass on a fake field goal to beat Notre Dame, D'Antonio checked himself into a hospital with chest pains and soon after, he suffered a heart attack. Coach D'Antonio returned later that season to face arch rival Michigan in Ann Arbor where the Spartans won in dramatic fashion. Coach D'Antonio called it a career in 2020 with the school's highest win total and greatest winning percentage. Coach D'Antonio has a long history of helping others off the field by promoting healthy, vibrant communities through his charitable and community service work. His efforts were nationally recognized in 2016 when he received the Gene Stallings Award given each year to a coach based on their community service. Coach D'Antonio is more than a great football coach. He lives his life and serves his community with the heart of a champion. It is our pleasure to present the 2023 Bear Bryant Heart of a Champion Award to head coach Mark D'Antonio. Thank you very much, and it's a privilege to be here tonight. I uh, want to thank the Bear Bryant Association, the American Heart Association, Marathon Oil, and St. Luke's for the award. Uh, they almost got me in 2006 10. They almost got me. Thank goodness that uh, my wife, who was here tonight, uh, helped me through that and recognized that we actually got in the car with her team doctor and drove down to the hospital. and. Uh, Walked in, I opened the car door, walked in, and just wasn't feeling, just feeling a little bit off. And the um, guy said, the uh, doctor said, you gave me an EKG, said you're having a heart attack. I said, right now? People are waiting outside. <laughs> but uh, that is the case. But early detection, that's what I can say in watching the videos up here. Early detection will make all the difference in the world. Um, I was 54 years old and went on to coach another nine years or eight years or whatever it was. I want to uh, congratulate Bob Stoops. Where's Coach Stoops at? Right here, 
one of my best friends. I want to also congratulate the finalists uh, for, for tonight's award. Uh, you know, from my perspective, when you look down the list of the people who have been here, it's uh, college football's finest, premier coaches. You can't get here without having great success. And to be a part of this makes it very, very special and very humbling. I got five things that I talk about to our players constantly. Relationships, keeping a passion for your education, got to win because there is a standard, got to give back to the community, and finally you got to work at it every single day. You got to work and there's got to be a discipline to it. But I want to thank everybody for having me and my wife. It's been a special night for us and I want to say go green and I look forward to uh, the rest of the night. Thank you. Congratulations again to Coach D'Antonio. That's a bad man right there, one heck of a football coach. I would now like to invite to the stage Greg Harrelson, Senior Vice President and CEO of Memorial Hermann Texas Medical Center, who will help me with welcoming our next honoree. First awarded in 2000, the Paul Bear Bryant Lifetime Achievement Award recognizes the career accomplishments of the finest coaches in college football. The award highlights the outstanding achievements and extraordinary contributions which have reflected honor and sportsmanship to the game of football throughout the coach's career. Bob Stoops was a four-year starting defensive back at the University of Iowa where he earned all Big Ten honors and was named team MVP in 1982. Following his senior season, Stoops began his coaching career as a volunteer graduate assistant with his alma mater. He went on to various coaching positions at Kent State and Kansas State before taking over as defensive coordinator at the University of Florida, where he led a Gators defense that would win the 1997 National Championship. In 1999, Stoops was named head coach at the University of Oklahoma, and the rest, it's history. Coach took the Sooners to four national championship games, winning it all in 2000 to cap off an undefeated season, which earned him the Paul Bear Bryant Coach of the Year Award right here. Coach Stoops is the winningest coach in Sooners history. He led Oklahoma to 10 Big 12 championships and a bowl game appearance in each of his 18 seasons as head coach. In 2021, Stoops was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Tonight, it is my absolute honor to, to honor Bob Stoops with the Bear Bryant Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it to have your name mentioned in the same sentence with Paul Bear Bryant as a coach. All of us here know as coaches, that's like the best of all time. I mean, uh, are you kidding me? And for the second time for me. So I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm very thankful. Thank you for this recognition. Um, I'm really proud to be here with so many great people. One of my best friends, Mark D'Antonio and Becky, the best people in the world. We've been, we were buddies back when we were graduate assistants, all you coaches. We were back in 83. We, we met each other as 20 year olds running around, uh, going to convention together. Uh, love these guys and we've been, we've been very close friends a long time. I'm proud to be here with these college coaches that are being recognized tonight. They're so great. Uh, love watching them, what they're doing. Um, so anyway, I, I'm, uh, I just feel, then I look at the list of past recipients, Bill Snyder, Hayden Fry, Barry Switzer, all mentors of mine, Barry Alvarez, on and on, um, that have been Lifetime Achievement Award winners that are all mentors of mine, the people I grew up following and that mentored me. So I'm, I'm very grateful and none of us, none of us get here alone. Uh, this is the ultimate team game, football. So I'm, I'm my, my, my family, 
my uh, assistant coaches through the years, my, uh, you know, the support staff, my players. But Dusty Dvorak, one of my great players. The, the, the sacrifice, the hard work, they're the ones that make us good or not. And, and I appreciate the hard work of the players, the assistant coaches, on and on. So anyway, this is a reflection of all of them. Thank you for this tonight. Appreciate it. Coming up next, a very special Open Your Heart story. Good evening, everyone. I am proud to serve as the chairman for the 2023 American Heart Association Paul Bear Bryant Awards. Tonight, it's about celebrating excellence in college football, both on the field and off the field. But it's also about a lot more. It's about the fight against heart disease, stroke, vascular disease. Thank you to those who are joining us here tonight in Houston, in person, in this beautiful ballroom at the Post Oak Hotel. And for those of you watching at home, your support raises funds to help support research, educational outreach programs, and underserved communities suffering from significant health disparities. It helps to teach the life-saving skills of hands-only CPR and so much more. Tonight, we've met some amazing men that are leading their communities and leading their teams. But I'm going to introduce you to one more amazing person tonight. He is an overcomer. This is Peter's story. I think it's important to tell football players, live in the moment. Don't take anything you're going through for granted. Take all the memories, soak them all in because you only have them for that time and you can never go back in time. For Peter Paji, playing football for the University of Texas was a dream. Going back to 2019, he was ready to live that dream as a freshman defensive lineman. But shortly after starting practice with the Longhorns, Paji realized something was wrong. I started experiencing issues in my heart in my dorm. Uh, I remember I was just playing video games and then all of a sudden I started getting a shorter breath. And then after practice you get away, I started noticing I was losing weight. I went from like 260 to like 250, like two or three days. They did a chest x-ray and then they found out that my heart was enlarged. So that same day I went to the heart clinic and then he, the doctor just said, yeah, your heart's really big right now so we gotta take care of you before this gets bad. They said I had cardiomyopathy. It's been an enlarged heart, and your heart doesn't pump blood to your body as fast. Peter was on a lot of machines in the hospital. They had to put him on a life support uh, for his heart because his heart could not function on its own. He's thinking about football, and will he be able to play football again? All these emotions that he was going through, thinking about his life, that was very hard. I decided to retire uh, whenever like Donald, the head of the trainers, came up to me and he told me this stuff is not getting better. If you play with this heart on the field, like it won't be good. And he's like, I know you love football and all, but like you gotta look at your life. Football is not bigger than your life. Losing him was big. He was going to become a great player for us, and uh, you know I wish he, you know, would have got the opportunity to just do what he came here to do. It kind of hurts at the time because all the work you put in, you didn't really get to show what you're capable of. It took me like a whole year to like really accept that retirement, to be honest. 2021, towards the end of the year, the doctor started letting us know that he might need a transplant. And we were told that when you get the heart, the person has to be at the same height and weight. And Peter being 6'5 and 230 pounds, that was the most difficult part. So what are the odds of getting the right heart that's going to match his body? I went through a lot of stuff while waiting for the heart. And like that process taught me to be grateful for the little things. And also um, to be patient. It also taught me like wisdom and your, the support group you have. Like I didn't know how many people actually like supported me. Like all the texts I received, so that meant a lot to me. After nearly three years of waiting, wondering, and hoping, Paji and his family finally got some good news when the phone rang while Peter was in the hospital with his mother. 
answered it. And the lady's like, I just want to tell you, you got a new heart. I was like, Mom, I got a new heart. She's like, you're kidding me. Yeah, I got it. I was like, oh my goodness. I was so happy. I just cried tears of joy. And then we said a prayer because we were very thankful for God giving us that blessing. I was just thankful because I didn't have to wait no more. On August 25th, 2022, Peter's surgery was a success. While recovering, Peter was able to rejoin his teammates on the sidelines this season for the first time since 2019. That was heartwarming. I almost shed a tear. He's my brother, you know, and uh, just seeing him ha happy and healthy, it was a great moment just to see him for the first time. It was almost like a movie, like where they spin the camera real quick. It was like, ah. It definitely just, just lit up when I saw him. Uh, you already know, it's your boy Roshan number two, aka Peter's roommate. We yeah, about to turn Peter's up. Roommate. We about to turn up uh -huh. and get this dog, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, all that, all that. I think it meant a lot for him. Um, uh, hold up. Yeah, I think it meant a lot for him just to, you know, be around the guys. And when he came back and sat next to my locker, it just brought back so many memories of him just being my locker mate. So it definitely hits home for me just because I know that going through a situation like that, it's not easy. I was just happy to see him. I've made a lot of relationships with a lot of people and all the people I've made memories here with, it means a lot to me. And they've changed the person I am coming from high school. And even though I didn't get to play, it felt awesome to see that they love me, uh, even if I'm not playing with them. Through this whole experience, I must say that he's become a much stronger person and he's not taking anything for granted. He takes time to listen to things and uh, very, very appreciative about life. If you say hard to me, I just think of my whole journey, all I've been through and all I've overcome. The one thing uh, I always take with me from this recovery is to always pass this on to others and uh, share my testimony. Whenever someone feels down, just be able to tell them my story and hopefully it motivates them. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Pudgy is here with us tonight. Peter, you're an overcomer. Thank you for sharing your story with us. It is now my pleasure to bring to the stage the finalists for the 2022 Coach of the Year. In his first season at TCU, Coach Dykes led the Horned Frogs to an undefeated regular season and a spot in the national championship game. Please welcome, from Texas Christian University, head coach Sonny Dykes. <laughs> coach Fritz led the Green Wave to a 12-2 record won the American Athletic Conference and beat USC in dramatic fashion in the Cotton Bowl. Please welcome from Tulane University, head coach Willie Fritz. <laughs> coach Trailer led the Roadrunners to a 11-3 record, a Conference USA Championship and a berth in the Cure Bowl. Joining us on stage from the University of Texas at San Antonio, head coach, Jeff Trailer. All right, fellas, now it's time to put your feet to the fire. Have a little conversation, have a chat, and do what I typically do, ask a bunch of questions to some excellent coaches. So all of you guys, I'm gonna ask a few questions that kind of go around the horn. We'll start with you, Coach Dykes, and we'll work our way around and get through some uh, important stuff. Um, just being here at this unbelievable event, the Paul Bear Bryant Award, Coach Stoops talked about what that name means in the coaching fraternity. What's it like for you to be sitting up here on stage with a chance to win this award tonight? Well, it's really, really humbling for me personally. I mean, just uh, to be up here with Coach D'Antonio and Coach Stoops, 
Um, I mean, those are two giants in our, in our profession, uh, the past winners of this award. Just a really prestigious list. Um, you know, it's just, it's, as I said, very humbling. Um, you know, just really fortunate to be here and be a part of it and have a chance to be in this profession. It's a great, uh, it's a great profession. Uh, we get a chance to have an impact on young people and uh, we're really blessed to have a chance to do it. Go Frogs. <laughs> go Frogs. <laughs> go Frogs. We need a roll wave out there someplace. Come on. There we go. No, I'm also very humbled and honored to, to be here. This is, uh, really appreciate the American Heart Association the hospitality they, you know, extended to myself and my family. And, and as you talked about with Coach Antonio and Coach Stoops, you know, th those guys are real, uh, you know, what you want to accomplish in coaching. And they've done it the, the right way. And I know Jeff and Sonny do the same thing at their respective schools. So just very honored to be here. Coach Trailer. Oh, it's surreal. I mean, I was a Texas high school football coach for 15 years. These guys are my heroes. I've had guys play for Coach Stoops. The respect I have for Coach Antonio from a distance. I watched Willie and Sonny's teams practice a million times. So I'd probably still be in Big Sandy, Texas if Danny Long hadn't hired me at Jacksonville back in 1993. <laughs> so I appreciate you showing up, Coach. I'll start with you, Coach Trailer. When you hear the name Bear Bryant, first thing that pops into your mind? Uh, Junction City Boys, uh, reading about it, hearing the stories. Uh, just, you know, I, I see coaches getting in trouble nowadays for practices being too hard, too long, and I just always think about what that would look like back in the day, I guess. <laughs> Coach Fritz? You know, one of my mentors in coaching was a guy by the name of Elwood Kettler, and Elwood was the quarterback for the Junction Boys. And I coached with him a few years and friends with him for a long time until he passed a few years ago. And he'd always talk about Coach Bryant. That's how he always referred to him and, and talked about the lessons that he learned from Coach Bryant. So uh, I feel like I kind of knew him a little bit through Coach Kettler, but oh, what a great man and coach. You know, um, I, I knew Coach Bryant since I was a kid in terms of my, my dad talked about him all the time. Uh, my late father, Spike Dykes, was a huge admirer of Coach Bryant's. Enough so that in 1969, uh, he and three other high school coaches, he was the head coach of Big Spring High School at the time, got in a Volkswagen bug and drove from Big Spring, Texas to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And Coach Bryant let him watch practice and had a huge impact uh, on my father and, you know, learned some lessons that he took from that day. And, we thought so much of him for on my 12th birthday. I got an autographed picture of Coach Bryant. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's what I received, still have it to this day in my office. And his, uh, his legacy has just meant so much to all of us in football. And again, it's just such an honor to be a part of this. No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. All right. A little more just individual questions for a little bit. I'll start with you, Coach Fritz. After you guys win football games, you crowd surf with your players. It's awesome. It's one of the great, you know, some coaches dance, you're, you're, you know, you're crowd surfing. Where did that come from? What's the origination of that? Well, I can't dance, so I had to find <laughs> something else to do. And no, I just started doing it. I, I'd get up and I'd do a little song after the game. And, and uh, you know, I only do it after a win. So my players catch me when I jump. I actually have one of my former players out here, Michael Bishop. Michael played for me at Blinn Junior College and then went to Kansas State, and he just got inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame yesterday. I don't know where Michael is, but you, yeah. would you stand up, Michael? Right oh, yeah. there. Love you, buddy. So proud of him. And, and uh, so we started in 1993 at Blinn, and, uh, and now there, there's cameras in there every once in a while, so other people know about it, but I've been doing it for a long time. Are you ever worried that they're not going to catch you? Like what? I only do it after wins. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to you, Coach Dykes. I was talking with your amazing wife earlier, and she said that you like to keep it loose at practice. You let the players, in conjunction with your strength staff, make a playlist. But every now and again, you make the playlist. What's on a Sonny Dykes playlist? Give me a couple of songs that we're listening to out there at practice. Well, it, it kind of runs the gamut, really. Um, you got to have a little bit of country, some some Fort Worth flavor, maybe some Pat Green yeah. uh, in there a little bit. Shout out to Pat. Um, 
you got to have a little bit of old school rap, you know, got to have a little Ice Cube and some of those guys in there. Just, uh, you know, takes me back to my 